All right, guys, so I've got the X68000 just temporarily set up here on this LCD monitor. And uh, you guys know I'm a huge fan of the X68000. I don't think I'll ever stop buying stuff for it. And so that leads me to my recent get. This is actually an extremely rare piece of hardware for the X68000. And this particular piece of hardware is for the X68000 Super, Expert, and Ace models which share similar motherboard layouts. And what this is, is a CPU accelerator. So the stock X68000, this particular model, comes with a 10 megahertz Motorola 68000 processor. What this does is actually allows you to change between the original 68000 processor and a 68030 processor, which is a 32-bit version at 20 megahertz, so two times the speed. Now I'll show you this board here. I've got the case cracked open and I'll give you a little tour of what we're looking at. So as you can see here, the uh, obviously the chip underneath the heat sink is going to be the 32-bit 68030. I did add this heat sink, which is completely unnecessary, but I just the nerd in me said I needed to do it, so I did. Uh, here is the original stock 10 megahertz Motorola 68000 processor. This one's made by Hitachi. And you've also got a floating point unit unit right here. So uh, math coprocessor. There's really not many games that actually use that, but uh, but it's there should they need to. And this just snaps right into the original CPU socket. And you may be able to see the pins right there. Uh, those are the pins that correspond with the original socket that this CPU is plugged into. Now the way this works is it's entirely software driven. So I install a piece of software that loads into the SRAM, which is essentially like where the, your BIOS settings are kept. And this changes the boot configuration a little bit. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. So I'll reset. So if I hold down XF1, you'll see I get a menu here. So uh, MPU, microprocessor unit. So it's asking me, okay, which CPU do you want to use? And the reason this is handy is because a lot of games are not compatible with the 68030 or don't work well with the 68030. So you can always go back to the legacy mode and select 68000. And uh, that way you get the compatibility as well. So there it tells you there, excellent 30. That's the custom boot screen, 68030 20 megahertz. And the performance increase is pretty good. I would say it's probably on par with an XVI, uh, which may be surprising to some of you, but you have to consider that the 68030 is going to be hindered by a 10 megahertz bus. So you're running a 20 megahertz processor, but the bus speed of the motherboard does not change. So uh, you still are limited by that 10 megahertz bus. However, it is, uh, it is quite a bit faster, especially for games like Illumination Laser. Uh, modes like Original Spec, which were just unplayably slow on the original 10 megahertz chip, are now much faster. And uh, it's just a really cool piece of hardware. Uh, I still can't believe I've had it. I've seen these occasionally show up on Yahoo Japan auctions. And they've always been just prohibitively expensive. And I did find this for a reasonable price. It was still expensive. But, uh, but it was reasonable. And uh, my wife would probably not approve of me paying several hundred dollars for a 25-year-old processor board. But that's the way it goes with these old machines nowadays. Uh, so, let me show you a game here. And it may be difficult for you to to determine any performance differences, but those of you who are familiar with the stock X68000 may be able to decipher. And this, this processor running at 20 megahertz doesn't really get even warm. Uh, the heat sink is totally overkill, but uh, it just looks cool. Like it's got more power than it than it really ever should have, which I guess is the case, but... So I'll go down here to make sure I'm in original spec. And this was completely unplayable on the, on the 68000.
you can tell it does still slow down a little bit, but uh, like I said, it's probably not going to be nearly as powerful as a full-fledged X68030 with a 68030 processor on its native bus, but still much faster than stock. All right, so I'm going to uh, show you a game that doesn't work. Now, there are a lot of patches that you can install to uh, fix the compatibility issues, which I have not installed any of those yet. Um, I'll get around to that. This is just basically installing it, installing the software for the processor card, and then, uh, and then just poking around with some games here. Uh, let's check Strider. I don't think Strider worked too well. Nope, nothing else. That's it. Oh. <laughs> the incompatibilities. Oh, there it goes. Maybe it will load. The incompatibilities will uh will vary from uh from corrupt sound to uh Yeah, this one seems to work. Sometimes the sound will be off, or, uh, or the graphics will be corrupt, or the game just simply won't start, but it uh, just seems to depend on the game and how it was written. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this rare piece of hardware, the Processor Accelerator, the Excellent 30S, and I'll see you next time.